In this video, we're going to be looking at the Superbase remote procedure call, what they are, what we use them for, why we use them, and how they can supercharge our applications. Okay, so if you've seen any videos on this channel, uh, this is a screen you are going to be familiar with. It is the uh, custom code, custom actions in Flutterflow, and we use this all the time where we call a Superbase remote procedure call. Now, if we go to the Superbase docs, essentially calling a Postgres function, I mean, it's literally the same thing, remote procedure call, and we are calling a function within Superbase. So what we are doing, and if you've seen the videos again, you're gonna know this, but what we're doing, if we have got a Postgres function stored within our Superbase database that performs an action, we can, query it from Superbase and return the results, would be it a you know, true or false, it could be a boolean, it could be text, it could be a JSON, it could be an integer, what a double, whatever it is. What we do when we're calling it from Flutterflow, we're passing in some parameters to filter the data we need and we return the response or not depending on what we're doing and we'll go into it. So what can we do with these? Because they're really powerful. So essentially anything you can do with a Postgres procedure, you can do, you can call and perform that procedure from Flutterflow within Superbase. So, you know, if you're creating, you're selecting, you're sorting data, you can interrogate data, you can delete data, uh, you can send emails, you can send text messages, WhatsApp messages, so you can search and then you know you can use authentication and use the functionality such as changing passwords and two-factor authentication that kind of thing which we've done and basically literally anything you can do with Postgres uh, you can call it with a remote procedure call within your Flutterflow app and use that information so if we go back into Superbase so this is the Superbase docs and this just literally just tells you what it is now if we go to our auth project and look at some of the things we're doing so let's go into our sql editor we'll come back to the extensions in a minute because these are pretty important for this so let's say we want a search table there's a video on this which you can go and watch uh, and essentially what this does this is the super base function the sql function that runs when we call it so if we call the search table function from our flutterflow app what we do, send in a search term, and then it returns to us a JSON with the results. Now, there is a separate video on this, which you can go and watch to explain exactly how this works and what we're doing. But essentially, in our Flutterflow app, we have got the search table custom action, and we are calling the search table function, and we're passing in the parameter of the search term which is what we're doing here. And that is just one of the things we're doing and you're using it to search a table. Another one is if we've got an app where we are not doing a super base query on the page for user data because you're doing one for something else, for instance, but on our menus or whatever, we want to show the user's picture profile picture. This particular one is um, a custom action that goes and fetches the users, uh, the URL of the user's uh, profile image. It returns an image passed, essentially just text. And we're calling the Superbase function called my image and we're passing in the email address. So where the user's email matches the parameter we're sending in, in the table, we will ten, send back the URL for their picture. And we're doing that on many pages. And we do this particular one we use on page load. So uh, so when the page loads, we trigger this custom action, which in turn triggers the, uh, makes an RPC call, remote procedure call, which triggers the my image super base function, which we return the uh, the image URL. So if we go back into super base again, um, my image, and again, this is the one we're calling. They're actually not stored in the uh, SQL editor. They are stored in super base functions, which not extensions. Um, in here so this is the these are the functions that are being called and if we for instance go to my image and edit the function this is what's being called this is the, the code that's being called but it's just easier to display in the SQL editor to be honest so that's another one that we're using 
So if we're summing values in a table, there's a video where we're summing values. I don't believe it's actually within this particular database in a different one. Um, but essentially, again, what we'll do, we'll make a remote procedure call to Superbase, call a function that sorts and sums the values in a, col in a, in a column, sends the result back to, back to your Flutterflow app. There's anything you can imagine, what you can do with SQL, you can do with a remote procedure call. Now, say you wanted to uh, build a blogging app or something, or you may want to do sort of any anyway, sort of app where you may want to create a table for each user. So you can call a, a function, you call it create table, user's table, whatever you want to call it, and you send in, you know, some of email or their UUID, so you can attach it to identify it to each individual user. And then you can, in Superbase, you can then, you know, create a function that in the SQL editor that will create a table. So what will happen is your user, when they sign up, they will automatically get a table created and it will be assigned with their user ID. So you'll be able to then know it's their table. So then every user, I mean, something that's done, it just automates the process of that particular thing. So that's another thing you can do with it. Here we've got one that checks if a user is logged in for the first time. This is a job board app. So if they're logged in for the first time, go through the onboarding process. And if they're not logged in for the first time, they don't need to go through the onboarding process. So that's a, done in a remote procedure call use a purpose that is to find out if they are an employer or a job seeker again gets sent in different directions within the app so anything you can think of to do with an sql procedure you can call it from your flutterflow app and perform the actions you know and obviously you know we've got the, the favorite stuff that we were talking about in the previous video um so why do i do it like this Firstly, I'm comfortable with it. I like all this. I'm comfortable in this environment. I enjoy doing it, which makes it a lot easier for me. Uh, secondly, we've got a bit of portability. If we put everything within Flutterflow and we change platforms or you know, we find Flutterflow is not working for us, whatever, we, we have to rewrite everything. But if we um, use a remote procedure call and do a lot of our functionality, sort of back-end stuff in Superbase, then these functions are still going to exist. So we can do the remote procedure call from another language this is the dark client, but there is just as, sim just as easily you can get them in all these other languages and you can call the remote procedures from from these as well. So it gives us a bit of security and a bit of future proofing based on platforms. So I hope that gives you a flavor of how powerful these things can be in terms of, you know, standard database functions. If you go through the uh, Postgres docs and you can look at all the different commands and all the different types of things you can do, pretty much it can all be done by calling it from your Flutterflow apps. Uh, so look at a couple of extensions quickly, uh, just to see again a bit more of the, the the things you can do beyond standard sorting of data. So if you go into sort of database extensions, you've got your list of the extensions that come with your Superbase instance. Uh, and you've got the ones that are, there's some standard ones that have always enabled. I've got a few more enabled here. Uh, and then there's the ones that are available. Uh, I'm going to look at a couple of these. So the first thing I'm going to look at is Postgres HTTP because uh, I use that a little bit and it allows us to connect to APIs from our database rather than through Flutterflow. Uh, now on a phone app, a native app is maybe not such an issue, but on a web app and if you're not using Firebase, so if we go into APIs and we was I'm not going to create one, but if, if we could create a call in here and we're using Superbase, we can't hide the functions behind in the cloud like you can with Firebase. Because if you're using Firebase, you, Firebase, you can add additional layer of security by putting all the functions, i.e. The, 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 the elements that hold the API keys and everything in a cloud function, which you can't if you're using Superbase. So that's an issue. So I've been using Postgres HTTP and I use it for sending SMSs and emails. So this particular function sends emails. This is a project management app. So every time a project gets updated, we send an email to the project team to say, this is what we've updated, your project has an update or whatever that may be. So we're using Mailjet and as you can see, we can connect to the Mailjet API uh, all the private keys and things we're keeping in a 
different table in a private schema which we're bringing in as variables. I'm going to go through the Postgres HTTP in detail. I'm going to do a video on this. So if it all looks a bit much, don't worry. I'm going to cover it because it is a really handy. Uh, now this, I actually used a project on GitHub called Superbase Mailer. And this is a great project and it got loads of different um, mail sending providers where you can use their API. And that is the project I use when I set that up. Like I say, it works brilliantly. I use it literally every day it, it's it's really good so that's one use for it so if we go back into this other project and this one we are using the cinch api cinch is a sms provider and again all the private keys we're bringing in from a private keys table in in somewhere else in in the database for obvious reasons and again we're connecting to the cinch api and we're sending sms mess messages and this one is for the six digit codes for our two-factor authentication video so like i say th this is pretty good stuff so we can use rather than connecting to an api through flutterflow particularly if you're doing a web app i think this is probably more important then you can do it through sql in your super base functions and you just call the function from uh from your flutter app and you can pick any api because as long as you can return a value so if you can return a json or whatever you want to do you can connect to that from Flutterflow, return your data, whatever it is you're getting it from, and you can do it all with Postgres. So for instance, if you wanted to, if you wanted to connect to an API that returned this information, that returned, I don't know, let's say stock prices information or sports betting information or sports scores or whatever it may be, any type of information you could return it in a format, i.e. a JSON, and you can actually put it into a table directly all in Postgres and then just call all that information from your Flutterflow app. So for connecting to APIs, sending emails, sending SMSs, this is what I'm currently using and it's I mean I, I think it's it's I think it's great. And then another one uh, extension which I thought was really good I'll come on to now and I haven't used this but I when I was looking through this looking at which ones are available I thought this was a pretty good one and I'm definitely going to do a video on this. I'm going to look into it and do a video on it because I know that there is a problem or people do have problems with maps on Flutterflow so I'm gonna look into this and see if I can figure something out so the one I'm looking for is this one which is post GIS now like I say I am gonna look into this and I'm gonna have a play with it because I think this could be a really good use of um, connecting to an external Fun, you know external functionality within Flutterflow to really enhance a Flutterflow app I don't know that for sure because I haven't tried it but I think it will will be so what this one does it, it takes geographic information and you can say we can you know create in a table this particular example in the docs do restaurants with their location and then we can order them by distance just an example we can find the points within a bounding box so if you've ever searched on Airbnb and when you move the map, your your locations will repopulate, and that's that will what this kind of functionality will do for you. So, and you can obviously do it in in Dart with the RPC call. So, that's just another example of what you can do. So, hopefully, I've explained this in a way that this isn't really obviously there's not really many takeaways here in terms of you know do this. This is take this code, put it in this box, and is, this is going to work. This is more of a look what you can do with RPC calls because I'm using them all the time and I'm saying oh our old friend the remote procedure call and I just wanted to do a quick video on really what I've found to love about them because it just makes life easier when you're trying to create something that's not quite within the realms of what Flutterflow is designed to do you can do so many things with Postgres in SQL in Superbase that that's been my go-to and so far it's worked really well so hopefully you can look at this take it away maybe do some exploration on your own on the different um, extensions you can get or look through the official Postgres commands there's a several cheat sheets online for the commands and you can look at what you can do with the data in your apps that you thought may not have been otherwise possible 
So, and if you look at that and you come up with any ideas of what you might want to see on a video, let me know, because I'll be happy to have a look into it and do it. That'd be great. So yeah, hopefully that's helped. It certainly helped me just doing this, just to you know look through some of this stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully it covered what I wanted it to cover. And that was really just emphasizing the point of where I'm doing this and kind of driving it home a little bit. So always thank you for watching and I'll speak to you next time.